Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil Remake. This is episode 3. So last time we made some pretty good progress. We got hold lighter, so now we can incinerate corpses, and we ran into the result of not incinerating a corpse, which is a crimson head. Pretty nasty bastard with big claws that is very fast for a zombie. And unfortunately, we didn't actually kill that crimson head, so he's still going to be up there waiting for us. We also killed the dog, which led to us eventually getting the armor key, and now we need to hit up some of those places I unlocked. But before we do that, we actually have something that we need to do that might be a little time sensitive, which is why I want to do it first. Hey, okay, where is this guy? Alright, that's the head, so that's another zombie we don't need to incinerate. I'm a little worried about using so much shotgun ammo, but... It is what it is. Of course, with Jill, we don't need to rely on the shotgun as much as Chris does, because she does get a weapon that he doesn't, which allows her to more freely spend the shotgun ammo and save the other weapon for more powerful enemies. So I think I just ran around and unlocked a bunch of doors and didn't go through them, so now we're gonna actually go through them. Starting with the one in this hallway. I actually don't think I unlocked this one, because we didn't go back to this side after getting the armor key. So this is our safe hallway that we have cleared out, and there shouldn't be any zombies in here. For a while. However, there might be some zombies in here. Richard! What happened? You're wounded! This whole place is a killing zone. There are monsters. Also, terrible demons. What did this to you? A big snake. And it had to be poisonous. Poisonous? Richard, hold on. Bring me serum. I saw some, but didn't bring any. I'll go and get it, okay? You're gonna make it. Thanks. So I don't know how long it takes, but I know if we wait too long, Richard will be dead. And unlike the original, there is a good reason to save Richard. Because in the original, if you bring him serum, he still dies of the venom before you can apply it to him. And he just gives you his radio. So now we just have to head back to where we started the episode, unfortunately, but it's a pretty easy walk now that we've cleared the way. Also, that wound looked pretty nasty, so clearly whatever bit him has to use hemotoxin and not neurotoxin. Those are kind of like the two main categories of venom, though some creatures do actually use both in their venom. But neurotoxin pretty much just kills you by destroying nerve tissue. Which, you know, causes you to stop being able to breathe when your lungs stop getting signals. Whereas hemotoxin, it just kind of destroys your blood and your tissue, which is why it looks so nasty at the bite site. So, you know, even if we give him the anti-venom, he's still going to have a very gross, like, roughed-up arm. That's not going to go away. Whereas neurotoxin, as long as you get the anti-venom soon enough, it doesn't really leave any lasting damage. But it's generally faster acting than hemotoxin. Alright, so this shelf here, Jill mentioned there being lots of serums on it. And... I'm pretty sure this just has that auto-generated text <laughs> to fill it in. What was that? Ipsum lorum? Even Resident Evil 7, a lot of the textures just use that auto-generated text. Alright, so that was easy. 
And the reason I'm going through the outdoor is so we can skip that one zombie on the dining room balcony. Alright, so there is a lot we can get done in this episode. Okay, just double checking my health. Because the armor key does unlock a lot of doors. And a reminder that the thing we're looking for right now are the four masks, you know, that see no evil, hear no evil, etc. Actually, I guess it wasn't hear no evil, it was see no evil, smell no evil, taste no evil, and then one that's all of them. And we haven't found any of those yet, but those are our main progression item. Alright, Richard. Hope you didn't die horrifically yet. Here, Richard. I'm gonna give you a shot. Hang in there. Jill. Here's my radio. Take it. I'm... <sighs> Does it ever not hurt? I mean, he sounded not particularly in pain when he said that. Oh god, look at it. Pretty sure that arm has to get cut off. I'm okay. The others... Alright, you can just chill here for a bit. Uh, do we have room for one of these? I think we have room for one. What we really need right now is some more handgun ammo. So we're pretty short on that. I think there might be a zombie in here. Yep. Well, that was a waste. <laughs> I should have used a defense item there, but I wasn't thinking about it right away. <laughs> He's not done yet. Nope, he is done yet. Just a delayed blood reaction. It's locked. An emblem of a shield is carved into the lock. So, we're not getting in there right now. Honestly, I should get rid of this guy. This is a kind of a bad spot to have to use this, because we're not really going to have to come back here a bunch of times. That's all that's in here, right? Yeah, there's nothing hidden in the dark. Alright, there's a magazine. The only thing I hate about being able to manually reload is you do end up with just a useless, like, three piles of bullets taking up an inventory slot. Too dark to see much of anything. Thankfully, there's a candle here. And we've got a lighter. Which means there's another magazine. And there is a shelf. Good push. Which has a zombie behind it. I was trying to be very careful to trigger him without getting grabbed. I'm not going to bother killing this guy. It's a waste of ammo. I'm just going to lure him around. And then I'm going to dip in where he was. So there's the other sheet music we were missing. I think that's all that's in here. Yep. Okay, we're good to go. Lead them around the table again. The zombies' weakness really is tables. They can't go over them, they can't go under them, they gotta go around them. And then he got stuck. Try to get back to his little hidey hole. <laughs> Just leave me in here! Ah, I was gonna... Nah, won't let me push it because he's in the way. I was gonna box him right back in.
How does a zombie end up in a place like that? Do you think he was hiding before he zombified? No one will find me back here. Pulls shelf in front of self. Alright, Richard. Uh, you should be mostly safe. Just, uh, don't go through those doors. Okay. So we didn't really get much out of that right now, except the radio, which is not even in our inventory, but it'll be used at relevant points. But we did get the musical score, so that means we can go back and do the piano puzzle. As you might surmise, we have a puzzle here as well. There's something in this depression, but the grate is in the way and you can't reach it. Also, you can see the knights on the wall there. I think that's the order we have to push them in. I usually just kind of brute force this puzzle. Well, I guess it's not really brute forcing it, it's just logicking it out. Woe to those who disturb my sleep. There's a switch here. Press it? Nope. Never immediately press a switch when you find it in Resident Evil. Alright, let's try this order on the wall and see if that actually works. So, Shield Knight. Then Axe Knight. And then... Is that Sword Knight there, number three? Wish I could zoom in on those. I think it's Sword Knight, and then Halberd Knight. Oh wait, sorry, I pressed... I fucked that up because I pressed Halberd Knight when I meant to press Axe Knight. This is not really a hard puzzle to figure out by just doing it, though. Yep, so that pushes those two out, and then we just do the same thing again. So I think that was the correct order on the wall, I just fucked it up. I mixed up my axe-bladed weapons. A mysterious box. You take the jewelry box. And if you press the switch without pushing those, the room starts filling with poison gas, because Spencer loved poison gas. And if we faff around with the mysterious box, there's a switch. We press the switch. You can see that it has a puzzle on it. Not really much of a puzzle, though. Appears as if you failed. Oh, I guess there is a puzzle to it. I think you just need to do the outside ones first. And then do the other heart. No? I don't think I've ever actually had trouble opening one of these before. Oh, okay. I guess we just need to fill out the heart. There was a mask inside. It's a death mask without eyes, nose, or mouth. So there's our first mask. Uh, now let's see. Which way do I want to go? Well, my inventory's full, so I can't go the way I was gonna go. So let's do a little bit of depositing. We don't need the death mask until we have all four. 
I'm trying to remember if there's anywhere where there's a zombie I didn't incinerate yet. Because I'm worried. I'm pretty sure if there are any that I missed, they're going to have crimsonified already. Oh, there's a note on the wall. You can see someone left us some ammo. Alright, so let's deposit our mask. I'm going to start putting my key items down here for now. Alright, so now we have the complete Moonlight Sonata, which means we can play it. I think we can get rid of the shotgun for now. Now that we have some handgun ammo. Soon we're actually going to have enough stuff in here to warrant a good sorting, but we don't just yet. Also, we now have two stacks of grenade launcher rounds and no grenade launcher with which to grenade launch them. I guess we'll leave the score in here for now as well. Alright, and I'm not going to fill up on kerosene here. We're actually going to hit up another spot for kerosene so that we're not using up our easy supply first. Note here, I left you some bullets in the room on the right. Feel free to use them if you manage to get yourself in trouble, Barry. So Barry is just going around finding all these grenade rounds and being like, oh, Jill could probably use these. Okay, so now that we saved Richard, and we got that death mask, it's time to hit up some of those doors I unlocked last episode, but didn't actually go through. Because I think if you go through too many armor doors, that's what kills Richard. But I have no actual idea what the time limit is. Like, even out here, it looks so decrepit. It's all cracked stone and mold and dust. A plant that's been damaged by exposure to the elements. Also, a corpse. Forest has given up the ghost. That's such a weird line. <laughs> Every time I read that, it's just like you see one of your dead compatriots and you're just like, well, looks like he's given up the ghost. It looks like he's been dead for a while. Thankfully, he was also the guy with the grenade launcher, so now we do have a grenade launcher. And when you first find it, it's just loaded with basic explosive shells. I forget what this one is modeled after. It's not the Arwen, because that was the original one. So this one is, I think, a South African grenade launcher. Hmm. Hello? All right. Forrest wants his grenade launcher back. So he's not quite as tough as a Crimson Head, but he is fast. I'm not even going to bother killing him, actually. He's actually much more of a problem in a certain difficulty mode that's unlocked after beating the game with both characters. He kind of becomes a nemesis type character for a little while. 
Except imagine Nemesis if Nemesis could not be shot. Otherwise, he would violently explode and instantly kill you no matter where you are. Okay. So now that we got the grenade launcher, we're gonna go down here and we're going to go through the forbidden hallway. Because remember, we can't really use the door from the safe room to get to this side, so if we want to go through here, we basically have to do the long loop around through the window hallway. It's also worth mentioning that Crimson Heads can only occur if you kill the zombie. So if you leave a zombie alive for like the whole game, it'll never turn into a Crimson Head. Jill, no, go this way. Alright, remember this door that I unlocked in the first episode? I actually should have gone out here because I forgot. There is an important item out here we need. It's not there in the original game, which is why I forgot. I got some more dogs out there. We needed the earth. Ah, there's a red herb here, but I don't have any space. There's also kerosene, so that's why I didn't refuel, because this one's a pain in the ass to get to. <laughs> so I might as well use it up first. I think at some point I'll just do a little detour out here to get that pile of herbs, because we're going to need them later on. Okay, so now that we got that, uh, we don't need to go to the bathroom. And here's one of the random events that can occur when you're traveling through areas you've already been. It's essentially just an excuse for more enemies to spawn, or enemies to spawn where there weren't enemies before. Actually, I think this is an armor door as well. So yeah, now that we're making actual progress, we're going to start triggering some of those spawns. The title is written as follows. Bring the light of truth to the three spirits. Lisa, protected by the three spirits. A picture of a woman wearing a bracelet, a necklace, and a crown. There's a switch at the bottom of the picture. Press it. No. As always, don't press the switch when you first encounter it. So she's wearing a green crown, a purple necklace, and an orange bracelet. Picture of a valiant wearing a bracelet. Shouldn't it say, like, valiant knight and not just a valiant? It's set in yellow stained glass. There's a switch here. Okay. So that's wrong. So in the original game, this is a puzzle where you have to go from newborn child to old man, but in this one instead it's just a color matching thing with some stained glass windows. Alright, so he's wearing a necklace and he's turned purple. Picture of a saint wearing a crown, set in yellow stained glass. All right. Green crown, purple necklace, now we just need an orange bracelet. So both of these puzzles are pretty simple, but they're neat enough, I guess. I just feel like it would be hard to mess up this puzzle. I just noticed she doesn't really seem to lock onto the crows. Oh, I guess she does. This is what happens if I just mash the aim button, by the way. I'm not touching the sticks at all. <laughs> you do move a little bit forward every time you aim. There's also the fun of mashing the run button. So you can just skate around. Alright. There's death mask number two, and I don't have room for it. That's fine, though. We don't need to pick it up right the second, because we can just unlock this door. You know, this might be the crimson head I was worried about, now that I think about it. 
Because didn't we kill a zombie here in the first episode? Well, he doesn't seem to be here, but this guy's still here. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's shotgun ammo over there next to him. Ooh, that was a good opportunity to run in there for it. I'm going to try to get this without getting bit and without wasting ammo. Because this is a large enough area that we can give him the runaround. That's right. You want some of this sandwich, but you can't have the Jill sandwich. Oh, I gotta be quick or he's gonna pin me in. Shit, I still don't have space. I'm an idiot. <laughs> hey, I don't have space for this mask. Let's go for the shotgun ammo instead. I've been a terrible fool. Alright, well, that death mask is there when we need it. I guess technically we can just leave that there until we need to deposit the other three death masks. Since it's already outside. Okay. Now that we dealt with that... Is this an armor door here, or is this a helmet door? That's a helmet door. Alright, time to hit up the west wing. So there's kind of a section next to the safe room that I opened up, but we didn't actually go into. So I think that's where we're going to go next. What's the best way to get to that safe room from here? I think we can go up the stairs and then go straight across, but pretty sure the Crimson Head is sitting right between those two doors, so it'd be better to go around this way. Did I unlock this door yet? I did, because this is where the tiger with the gemstone was. So we didn't go in this door last time either. Now let's go back to the safe room first, drop off some stuff. So even with Jill's two extra slots, you still are going to need to sometimes just be like, well, I can't pick anything up, so I'm just going to have to beeline it for a safe room. But that's just the nature of the game. Okay, so we don't need this green herb right now. I just wanted to start stacking some of those in my inventory so that later on we'll have some healing items available. What did I just do? Oh, cool. I didn't know you could switch ammo like that. That's actually really convenient. In the original, you could not switch grenades at all until you had emptied out the current ones. Okay, so... I think for the moment we can drop off the lighter. Just to free up some extra spots, and we need the... Chemical to use on plants. Again, I don't know why they didn't just call it herbicide chemical agent to destroy plant growth. Oh, now it's called herbicide. So is that what Jill just thought it was when she first picked it up? She's like, yeah, this looks like a chemical to use on plants. first or I want to go this way first. We've got these zombies just standing outside the windows. You can probably guess they're going to be a problem eventually. Okay, so we've got the plant here. The lid on this water pump is open. Pump the water. So you can see there are five green herbs there. And if we pump the water there, and then put the herbicide in, it will actually destroy all of those green herbs. Which is why it's good to test this out first.
Don't even open it, Jill. Just throw the whole bag in there. Is it weird to just have, like, a fountain in the middle of a room? Like, this is not even a large room or, like, a entry hall or something. This is just a random room. Death mask number two. I guess technically number three, since we did find the other one. Death mask without eyes. And you can see there is... I guess this is a crusty window back here. I always just thought it was a wall, but it'll make sense when we're on the other side. So we have all these herbs. I think we'll take, like, two of them. Actually, even better. We'll mix two of them, and then we'll take another one. And now there's one more room in here we need to check out. Just gonna ignore all these zombies. Because they're not an immediate problem for us. Alright, so I kind of skipped over this room last time. Dolph was full of high proof liquor. The door is stuck on something and won't budge. Is it this guy's fat foot? Clothes and various bits of junk are scattered everywhere. Keeper's Diary. May 9th, 1998. Played poker tonight with Scott and Elias from security, and Steve from research. Steve was the big winner, but I think he was cheating. Scumbag. May 10th, 1998. One of the higher-ups assigned to me to take care of a new creature. It looks like a skinned gorilla. Feeding instructions were to give it live animals. When I threw in a pig, the creature seemed to play with it, tearing off the pig's legs and pulling out the guts before it actually started eating. May 11th, 1998. At around 5 a.m., Scott woke me up. Scared the shit out of me, too. He was wearing a protective suit. He handed me another one and told me to put it on. Said there'd been an accident in the basement lab. I just knew something like this would happen. Those bastards in research never sleep, even on holiday. May 12th, 1998. I've been wearing this damn spacesuit since yesterday. My skin's getting grimy and feels itchy all over. The goddamn dogs have been looking at me funny, so I decided not to feed them today. Screw them. May 13th, 1998. Went to the infirmary because my back is all swollen and feels itchy. They put a big bandage on it and told me I didn't need to wear the suit anymore. All I want to do is sleep. May 14th, 1998. Found another big blister on my foot this morning. I ended up dragging my foot all the way to the dog's pen. They were quiet all day, which is weird. Then I realized some of them had escaped. Maybe this is their way of getting back at me for not feeding them the last three days. If anybody finds out, I'll have my head handed to me. May 16th, 1998. Rumors going around that a researcher who tried to escape the estate last night was shot. My entire body feels hot and itchy and I'm sweating all the time now. I scratched the swelling on my arm and a piece of rotten flesh just dropped off. What the hell's happening to me? May 19th, 1998. Fever gone, but itchy. Today hungry and eat doggy food. May 21st, 1998. Itchy, itchy, Scott came, ugly face, so killed him. Tasty. Four. Itchy. Tasty. So that's one of the few notes that they really didn't change at all from the original. And it was pretty well written, even originally. Zombie surprise! Alright, can I get out of this room without shooting anyone? I cannot believe that guy didn't grab me. I thought I was going to have to use a dagger. Okay, so 
So now that zombie's kind of in the way. That one's also in the way, motherfucker. Well, we got the mask. That's the important part. And we didn't really even get anything from that keeper room except the handgun magazine. Alrighty. So now I suppose we should deal with the piano situation. I'm going to sort this before next episode. Make space for where I want to put stuff later. Alright, well, we don't need the death mask, but we do need the Moonlight Sonata. Mm. Is there anything else I really need right now? Nah, I think we can leave those. Actually, what we do need... I'm going to take the grenade launcher, and what we're going to do before we deal with the piano is we're going to deal with that friggin' crimson head upstairs, because I don't want to keep avoiding him. And he's kind of in a useful spot, so... He's gotta go. Thankfully, the grenade launcher is much more practical in this than the original, because the shells don't have really weird firing trajectories. You know, like, the old Resident Evil games, a lot of the grenade launcher ammo would do weird shit, like shoot three little balls. Is that it? Are you really down for the count already? I thought that would take two shots. Yeah, he's dead. Alright. Crimson Head dealt with. Oh, but this guy's gonna be crimson now. So it's producing a similar problem. Do I want to kill him? It's too late to uh, set him on fire, I think. Hmm. I mean, he's exactly where this one was, so it's going to be the same problem either way. So I think we should just deal with him. Hey, asshole. I only took one round. Oh, wow. I guess the knife finished him off. The grenade launcher almost killed him. I was going to switch to the handgun anyway. Put a couple shots into him. So yeah, that's, uh... This hallway is mostly safe now. There's still one zombie. But I'll take that herb so that we can clear it up. Okay. There's no items left in here. We do want to open up the shortcut to the main hall. Well... We're never really going to use the shortcut. If I can open it without having to shoot anyone, I think that's the best option, but... Yeah, no, he's right in the doorway. I could try to tempt him out, and then, you know, give him the runaround, but... There's not a lot of space here. Oh, I got stuck. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to squeeze by him, I don't think. So we'll just leave that guy there for now. I just wanted to open up that side staircase so we could get down to the first floor hallway without having to go through those two zombies that just spawned. Alright. Now we're gonna put away the grenade launcher. Serve its purpose admirably. And we're just gonna deposit this other stuff. Now, let's go play the piano. So yeah, I cleared this out so that now we can just cut across and then go down the stairs to get to that hallway. It's a little bit of a roundabout path, but... It's better than having to kill two zombies with our still somewhat limited amount of handgun ammo. It takes probably about eight bullets on average to kill a zombie. Sometimes less, sometimes more. They all have randomized health. Just ignore these crows that are hanging out in this room for some reason. What was 
what's the zombie situation in this hallway? Did we kill him yet? I think we did to go down to the kitchen. I think I killed him with a shotgun, so yeah, he's gone. Alright, so before we go in there, we need to go actually back to the dining room. Because there's an item here that I've just been ignoring since the start of the game. Which is the emblem. It's galled all around the outer edges due to frequent fitting. Nothing unusual. Is that an appropriate use of the word galled? Is that just like scratched up? That's actually a word I'm not familiar with. another door shaking. I think that's coming from the room where those two zombies are. They really don't like you to be able to safely just be like, I'm not gonna go in there because there's zombies in there because there's a bunch of events that will trigger where they just come through anyway. Okay, I didn't miss picking up anything in here, right? Unlike Rebecca, Jill is not rusty. She does not need to practice. Was there... There wasn't a piano in her apartment in Resident Evil 3 Remake, was there? I feel like that would have been a neat nod to the fact that she does play piano. But then again... How many people have a fucking piano in an apartment? It'd have to be a pretty small piano. Trevor's Diary. November 24th, 1967. Eleven days have passed since arriving on this estate. How did I end up like this? A guy in a lab coat brought me a meager plate of food and said, Sorry to put you through this, but it's for security reasons. That's when it hit me. It all makes sense now. There are only two people that know the secret of this mansion, Sir Spencer and myself. If they kill me, Sir Spencer will be the only person that knows the secret. But for what purpose? It doesn't matter now. It's too dangerous here. My family. I hope they are all right. I've decided to escape. Jessica, Lisa, I pray you are safe. November 26, 1967. How could I be so careless? I lost my favorite lighter. The one Jessica gave me for my birthday. Now it's going to be that much harder to escape this dark place. So we did find that lighter, and it did have an engraving from Jessica on it, so we are using his lighter. November 13th, the date when my fate was sealed. My aunt was hospitalized just three days before that. Jessica and Lisa said they were going to visit her. I wish I could be there with them. But wait, even as I'm writing, my memory is coming back to me more vividly. Just before I passed out, I remember the men in the lab coat saying something like, Most likely your family is already... I pray for their safety. November 27th, 1967. Somehow I managed to get out of that room, but getting out of this mansion won't be easy. I have to get past all the booby traps, tiger eyes, gold emblem. I have to try and remember for my own sake. I mean, if this is the guy who designed the mansion, you'd think he would know where all the traps are, because he built them. And designed them. Alright, so taking in the gold emblem traps us in here, but as you might expect, we just do another switcheroo, just like with the key. And that's everything in that room, right? Yeah, we didn't miss anything. And now, let's just go pop the gold emblem in the place where we took the wooden one from. Mm 
the switcheroonie is complete. But instead of just moving the clock aside like it does in the original, there is another puzzle here. A picture of two knights striking each other. The short sword has been thrust into the breast of one knight, while the long sword has pierced the head of the other. When the two have run each other through, the path to your destiny will open. It looks like you can turn the gears inside the clock. Try it. So you might think that this is something where you have to like line up the sword with the helmet and whatever, but no. The long sword is the minute's hand, and the short sword is the hour hand. Ah, damn it. I wish it would just select the same one. Okay, sorry, it's large gear is the hour hand and small gear is the minute hand. I like how the chiming of the clock was synced with the pendulum. And that nets us another mansion key. So this is the shield key, and we know we needed that for the area where Richard is. It's actually the only place we need it. This is the only key that has... <laughs> or the only one of the emblem keys that has a single door attached to it. Alright, so we're pretty much done with the West Wing now. At least for everything we can do currently. So we want to head back up to our East Wing save room. Because I think we're going to wrap up the episode here, and then next time we will make use of the shield key. So, things are going pretty well. I haven't really been taking a lot of damage, and we are starting to stockpile some ammo. But I'll definitely need more than I've got right now. Because we really don't have any extra shotgun ammo. But I kind of expected I would have more trouble with this than I'm currently having, because, again, like I said, a lot of the difficulty in this game is kind of front-loaded, though it then spikes again at a certain point later on because of a certain enemy. <laughs> okay, so we're going to keep the shield key, and, oh yeah, we still have to find where the last armor door is, because I think there's one or two more that I didn't open. we really need anything else for next time so we'll just save it here and that'll do it for episode three so thank you again for joining me for this playthrough of resident evil which i am enjoying very much because i think this is a very good game like all of the resident evils i enjoy playing but this one i think is definitely one of the ones that everyone should play at least once anyhow Take care until next time, folks.